Good evening and welcome to St. John's. Let us begin in prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to serve you. May all of our actions bring you praise in a special way today. We pray for the repose of the soul of Steve Haskins for whom this Mass is being offered. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. John the Baptist. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ the way we're called to follow, Christ the way that leads to God. When some other path the tracks us, keeps us on the road you trod, Jesus, Master, Friend, and Savior, be our way, our life, our truth. Christ the truth be. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world, receive, receive our prayer. prayer. You are, are seated, seated at the right hand of the Father, Father. have mercy on us. For you, For you alone, alone are the Holy One, one. You, you alone are the Lord, Lord. You, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. With, With the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit and the glory of God the Father, Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am the object of laughter, 
everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like a burning fire in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for you. pines and my soul thirst like the earth parched lifeless and without water my soul is thirsting for you O Lord thirsting for Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you. Thirsting for you, my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied. And with your exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you, my God. You are my help, and in the shadow of your I shall for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, 
but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed on the third day, and then on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing should ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory. And then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last week we had Peter uh, being named Peter, right? Simon uh, to to Peter, Petra, Rock. And today, it's quite the stark contrast. Instead of saying, I'll build my church upon you and kind of laughing these praises against to, to Peter, he says, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle uh, to, to me. Actually, another word we could use in there is is a scandal, uh, which is going to be kind of like a scandal, but also kind of translated as a stumbling stone, a stumbling rock. So instead of Peter being this this rock uh, like he was last week, now we have it where he's this stumbling block. And why is that? Because he tries to rebuke Jesus himself 
in saying, you know, you can't go to Jerusalem. You're not going to go to your passion. And Jesus has to go ahead and, and rebuke him, actually, to go to Peter and say, get behind me, say to your obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as humans do. And how do humans think? Well, we got that down pat, don't we? Because we're all humans. We're not God. And one of the things we want to do, of course, if all possible, it kind of seems like rationally, is that we'd want to avoid to go and be killed. We want to avoid going to Jerusalem and saying, go ahead and crucify me. We'd want to avoid suffering. At least at first, that's what we think. But we want to avoid suffering. But in reality, when we actually think about it, how often in our life have we taken on suffering voluntarily? To go and said, I'm going to go ahead and do this because the end goal is worth it. Remember, in high school, playing football. Maybe in the spring they'll play football this year. But uh, in the high school, playing football, uh, when I was in high school, and every single year right around now, it would be the end of, we call it, hell week. Where it would be two-a-days. Where it was absolute suffering. Practice after practice, day after day. You could go home sore. Being an offensive lineman, you'd go home not only sore, but your arms would be all black and blue. You weren't wearing cutoff shirts then, that's for sure right? And why would you undergo this? Why would you undergo this suffering? It was to get ready for the season. It was to get ready so that when you're in the midst of a game, in the midst of a battle, wasn't much of a battle, but whatever, you would be prepared. And it was hopefully so you could win that game or win that championship. It's not only in sports that we do this, but schooling I don't know about you, but I definitely thought schooling was suffering a lot of times. And in undertaking this, it was always worth it to go ahead and finish that, that class, to get that degree, more importantly, to gain that knowledge. And so we see this. We see that sometimes we voluntarily take on suffering, especially if it's worth the cost, if it's worth the, the price you know, recently, I think like many people during uh, the pandemic, I started reading more. And I downloaded an app. It's, it's called Libby. Uh, it's, it's a library app. And I'm able to read all these books. And I heard great uh, praise about a new book that had just come out. And it's called No Ordinary Dog. I guess it piqued my interest because, well, of course, I got a dog during the pandemic as well. I'm just, you know, playing pandemic bingo and getting all of them marked off, Right. But, uh, but reading more in the story of No Ordinary Dog is actually a story of a dog uh, named Cairo and is actually more of his handler. Uh, no Ordinary Dog is a story of, of this military handler dog, this military trained dog who was actually with the Navy SEALs. And his, his handler was, was Will Chesney. And, and uh, Will Chesney, of course, to be, become a handler for the Navy, Navy SEALs, had to become a SEAL team member himself. So it tells a story of becoming a SEAL and also tells a story of of Cairo and the training he had to undergo. And by the way, they're they're famous because Cairo is the dog that was involved in the the raid on Osama bin Laden. And so it's it's a good book, and it just came out in April, by the way. When we think of the Navy SEALs, and I'm always intrigued by military service, people that are willing to undergo this. You know, there's the regular military, but then there's the special forces. Talk about suffering. What did Will Chesney have to go through to become a Navy SEAL? Way to go through something, well, first he had to be selected, not just to the Navy, but actually get selected to go under, undergo this training. Even before he got to the 24-week period, there was training before that. But eventually he got to the 24-week period, which is called Basic Underwater Demolition uh, slash SEAL, so they call it BUDS. And it's a 24-week process that of these people who once again had to this qualify to be in here, 75% drop out. Not just because of the physical demands, but the mental demands as well. Because it's suffering upon suffering upon suffering, and then more 
suffering. Just like football, they too had something called Hell Week, but Navy SEALs went as much tougher than high school football. Uh, they barely had any sleep at all. They'd have to go on these huge uh, excursions. They'd have to go run into the ocean when it's 52 degrees outside, roll around in the ocean, all these other things. And most people, three out of four, would simply go ahead and ring the bell and say, I'm done. But why did this man, why did this soldier persevere on? Because his whole life he wanted to become a Navy SEAL. And he was going to endure any amount of suffering for it to happen. He had a goal, and he was able to attain it, and praise God, he was. He served our country. He brought uh, Osama bin Laden and, and other terrorists, you know, away and, and stuff like this. He served admirably and, and of course, uh, was able to, to be with his great dog, Cairo, uh, as well. Uh, the title of the book, is, uh, it says, actually, it's more of how a dog saved my life. And it's a, it's a beautiful uh, book. So if, if you're interested in that type of stuff, I highly recommend it. But once again, to undergo this suffering. And that's to serve the country, which is admirable and amazing and beautiful. But what are we called to do? Not just serve our country. We're called to serve God. We're called to serve God. God. And we know how are we called to do this. Well, the great commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all of your life. And that sounds easy to do. It sounds good to hear as well. But what does that mean? God wants everything of us. Not just a little bit. He wants us all. And he says to go ahead to deny yourself Take up your cross and to follow me. This is what he says to Peter and the apostles after he rebukes them. And we've heard this passage enough that we know, yeah, okay, yeah, deny yourself, take up the cross, follow me, no big deal. Let's go ahead and rephrase these words. Instead of taking up your cross, let's put something else in there. Because this is what Jesus meant. Deny yourself, take up your electric chair, and follow me. That's essentially what he meant in modern day terminology, because that's what it meant to take up your cross, was that you're going to suffer this humiliating death. And you're going to suffer because you are following me. Once again, this, this doesn't make sense. If we want to gain life, why would we lose our life? Why would we undergo this suffering? Well, Jesus goes on here as well. Essentially paraphrasing it, by the way, that we're not living for this worldly life. Why gain this whole worldly life to give up your life? And we can actually change that word, which the Greek would be in here as well. Why gain this whole world to give up your soul? To give up your soul. Your eternal life. But in order to gain that eternal life, once again, it's loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with everything, and undergoing some sort of suffering, some sort of challenge. But is it worth it? Is it worth it to be with God eternally, to have this love of God forever? Is it worth denying ourselves? taking up our cross, and following him? The answer is yes. Of course, I would say that, right? But the answer is yes for you as well, because you love God. And when we love someone, we'll do crazy things for them. We'll even suffer for them. We may even give up our life for them out of love for them. We hear about this in the scriptures as well. To be a true friend is to give your life for someone. To suffer for someone. Would you do this for your spouse? Would you do this for your child? For your parent? For your friend? If you love them, 
will you suffer for them? The answer probably is yes. If you love God, will you suffer for him? Sometimes, of course, we can feel like Jeremiah, by the way, who we heard about in our first reading, right? This famous line, You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. I don't know about you, but I've definitely uttered those words before in prayer, right? You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. Jeremiah, of course, feels this way because his vocation as this prophet was to go to Jerusalem and say, turn away from your evil ways. And if you do not, Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. And what do they do to Jeremiah? They ridicule him. They persecute him. They reproach him all day long. But Jeremiah goes on and he says, so often I say to myself, I will not mention God anymore. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. And so when we feel like we too sometimes may be being duped by the Lord, when we are undergoing this suffering, we say, I'm not going to do it anymore. What happens? Our bones, just like Jeremiah become like fire burning in our heart because we know that we are called to serve the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our life. To deny ourselves, to take up our cross, and to follow him in this suffering. The suffering that all of us will undergo sometime in our life or over and over and over again in our life. Is it worth it? Yes. Why? Because in enduring this and persevering through this and turning to the Lord in the midst of this, not only will we gain eternal life, not only will we continue to have our soul at the death of this world, but we'll have God as well right now as well. That he can be with us. That he can take up our cross for us sometimes. He may bear our yoke and we may follow him. And in doing so, what we are going to have is eternal life, eternal life with him. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. For him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, he rose again on the third day in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son as the door is glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead life for the world. And now gather together as a community of believers, we come before our Heavenly Father with these, our prayers. For those who lead the people of God, that they may seek after integrity 
and be true to their call to service. Pray to the Lord. Lord that those who defend and promote abortion may be transformed by the renewal of their minds and always to defend the right of every person to life. We pray to the Lord. Lord For blessings on all of God's priests, that they will more and more be conformed to the radiant image of God's Son and inspire many to offer their lives in service for the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord That young people... For young people to learn to love charity, justice, and a gentle spirit, we pray to the Lord. And for all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that they may be cared for with gentleness and patience, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you are all good and knowing of all of our needs. Please hear the prayers we make before you today and help us always to follow your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray for vocations. O God, we earnestly ask you, bless this archdiocese with many priests, brothers and sisters who will love you with their whole strength and gladly spend their entire lives to serve your church make you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children. Choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the clergy, pray for us. Priests, religious and deacons, obtain for us. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, 
For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we have lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Song to us, song to us, song to us, Dominus Deus about plenis angelia terra, gloria tua, hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini, hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially 
with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind minutes to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple quick announcements uh, this evening. First off, a reminder that tonight at 7 p.m. is our virtual fundraiser for uh, our school. Uh, and once again, uh, we have a special fund in need uh, for those fancy, dancy, nifty air filters, uh, which we got more of them into the school yesterday afternoon as well. So if you're able to tune in the virtual fundraiser tonight at 7 o'clock, it's a 30-minute fundraiser, and it goes to support uh, the school and the school building and everyone else here as well. You may have noticed that uh, during the Mass, uh, both Deacon Gary and I are, are wearing masks uh, throughout the Mass when, when it's permitted, when it's possible for us to do so. Uh, the reason for that is it's not required by the Archbishop for us to do that, but I thought in solidarity with you wearing a mask uh, that we will wear one uh, as well. So thank you for continuing to wear uh, your mask. I realize it's very hard to sing uh, wearing a mask, but it's, it's possible, I guess. Uh, but uh, thank you for even doing the responses even louder without yelling or shouting or spitting all over the place. All right, enough of that. Finally, I want to introduce to you our new director of faith formation. His name is uh, Will Beardmore. Will is going to come up to the front. Will has permission to take his mask off. So you know what his face looks like, by the way. But Will started with us on Wednesday, and once again, he is our new director of faith formation. He'll be out in the parking lot following Mass. You can socially distance, say hello to him, give an elbow or something like that. There you go, Deacon, right, or something like that. But let's welcome Will to our parish here at St. John the Baptist. Will is from Indiana, by the way. So not only like Indiana, but like southern Indiana, kind of. And so he has that great southern accent. He, are you a southerner? Not quite, but pretty dang close. But, uh, Will, one of the things we do here at St. John's is we, we love to pray. That's a good tradition to have, I think. So let's go ahead and pray for Will. Hail Mary, Mary full, full of, of grace, the Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
first my tears were running streams. So Thank you. 